Hi, it's Lindley Oz, and I wanted to address the subject I hear people talk about. I see it in the comments, and that is cigarette smoking. Now, pot smoking is also addressed in this article, but it's pretty interesting, and I want to show you where the use of tobacco comes from because it's very important. So if you're smoking cigarettes or using any tobacco product and you're having trouble quitting, this might inspire you to quit. And it might give you the strength to be vigilant about it and to really do it. It says, can a Christian still smoke cigarettes or use medicinal marijuana and expect to make it to heaven? A brief history of cigarettes and tobacco show us that the Mayan Indians in Mexico and the Americas were the oldest group to have first used tobacco from somewhere between 600 and 900 AD. Who were the Mayans? They were devil worshippers believed in a long count calendar that ended on December the 21st of 2012 and can be traced all the way back to the Sumerian civilization who worship the false god Marduk, Baal, and Horus. Oftentimes in history, and although not recorded with the Sumerians, cultivation of plants and herbs were used for many different purposes. Some theologians suggest that when the fallen angels had corrupted the seed of man— beast and living things, that it had been planned from the fall of Satan to pervert certain plants, animals, and humans from good to evil. And that's very true. We know that the Nephilim did a lot of strange things, and they spliced and diced God's creations to create their own creations. So it is quite possible that the fallen angels and the Nephilim did indeed pervert and corrupt seeds to create perversions of various tobacco products, including marijuana. The article goes on to say, if this is true, tobacco and marijuana, one containing nicotine and the other with significant amount of tar, could be cursed by God for their perversion into something that was meant to be good. We know that rope, for instance, is made from the same plant that marijuana comes from. So, you know, the plant very likely could have been perverted. Regardless, we know that its use, whether God created it that way or not, has been corrupted and perverted. Fast forward to modern history, and nicotine is just one of the ingredients in cigarettes. In fact, there are 4,000 additives and chemicals in cigarettes today, 69 of them that are known to cause cancer. Marijuana has 50 to 70% more carcinogens and is held longer in the lungs for the effect. Marijuana increases the effects of nicotine when smoked with marijuana because often people who smoke marijuana also smoke cigarettes. The tar residue left behind by marijuana in the lungs is a playground for abnormal effects of nicotine on the body. In fact, when compared side by side, the lungs of both tobacco and marijuana smokers look like this. And you can see some pictures they have here. Uh, Right here, let's look at this one. Okay, so they have different solvents. It's got insecticide, uh, ammonia, or, which is used as toilet bowl cleaner, um, paint, methanol, which is used in rocket fuel, carbon monoxide, arsenic, methane, which is found in sewer gas, vinegar, lighter fluid, uh, cadmium, which is found in batteries, steric acid, which is found in candle wax, hexamine, which is found in barbecue lighters, Um, industrial solvent, and so forth. And then over here, you have a picture of the lungs side by side. Here's a comparison between marijuana and tobacco. Marijuana deposits four times more tar in the lungs than tobacco. So here, the side-by-side comparison shows that the tar ingested is four times more potent than tar from tobacco. The chemicals that are added to cigarettes also make a toxic poison that affects the brain along with marijuana. Usually a person who smokes, if they use marijuana, will also smoke cigarettes. The end result is a drug that is so addictive and is more poisonous than strychnine does only one thing to the Christian. It slowly kills them through the bondage and addiction of the drug. Let's look at some common excuses for Christians to smoke either tobacco or marijuana. Much has been said and written on tobacco. Occasionally you have a Christian defend its use. I will tell you up front that I don't believe a Christian should use either of these substances. 
I believe them harmful to us physically, morally, and eternally. So here he's got some points. It says, let's review again some principles that we use when making moral judgments. A, the Bible gives us the answers to all of today's questions. B, our bodies belong to God, therefore anything that would defile them would be wrong. C, God made us, therefore he knows better what is good and right for our bodies than ourselves. D, human life is sacred, therefore the murder of innocent life is an abomination in God's sight. And E, anything that would cause another honest brother to stumble is wrong. Now, I encourage you, if you know someone who's a smoker or uses tobacco of any sort, including marijuana, to share this video with them and tell them it's just the facts. They can make their own decision. Number two, should a Christian use tobacco? A, the primary ingredient in tobacco is a poison. Nicotine is one of the most deadly poisons available. Two, its toxicity is comparable to that of cyanide. Three, the only reason why it is not more deadly is that it is diluted on tobacco products and that much of it is excreted in the urine. Four, nicotine has been a traditional ingredient in animal repellents and insecticides until cost became prohibitive. B, three important ingredients found in cigarette smoke. Number one, nicotine. Two, carbon monoxide, the same stuff that can kill people as emissions from automobiles. Three, cancer-causing carcinogens. Four, the fact is that every time a person ingests tobacco products, he or she is taking poison into their system. C. Some reasons why a Christian should not take tobacco products. Much of this was taken from the excellent tract by A.J. Hobbs. What about tobacco? Number one, tobacco users stand self-convicted. A. I have never seen a longtime tobacco user recommend that a non-user start. On the contrary, all I have talked to have urged young people to never take up the habit. If it is such a good thing, why don't smokers recommend its use? Most will admit it's a bad and nasty habit. B. Many will become angry when the subject is discussed. If a Christian can defend it as good and wholesome, why get so angry and defensive about it? Number two, it is a questionable practice. A. Even among those who will not admit that it is sinful would admit they have some questions about its use. B. Romans 14, 14, and 23. I know and am convinced by the Lord Jesus that there is nothing unclean of itself. But to him who considers anything to be unclean, to him it is unclean. But he who doubts is condemned if he eats, because he does not eat from faith. For whatever is not from faith is sin. Number three, its use enslaves the user. A. It is obvious that the use of tobacco tends to be addictive. How often have you seen smokers who have tried to quit and have all kinds of problems kicking the habit? B. It tends to control the tobacco user's actions from getting out of bed to getting back into bed. The tobacco user is controlled by tobacco. C. What does the New Testament have to say about enslavement? Well, 2 Peter 2.19, while they promise them liberty, they themselves are slaves of corruption. For by whom a person is overcome, by him also he is brought into bondage. 1 Corinthians 6.12, all things are lawful for me, but all things are not helpful. All things are lawful for me, but I will not be brought under the power of any. Number four, it is destructive to the body of a Christian. Can there be little doubt that tobacco products are damaging to the human body? Check again the ingredients of tobacco, carbon monoxide, nicotine, and cancer-causing carcinogens. There is abundant evidence to show that smokers have far more chance of getting sick than non-smokers. For example, smokers suffer 70% more heart attacks than non-smokers. C. What does the New Testament say about damaging the human body? 1 Corinthians 6, 19-20 Or do you not know that your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit who is in you, whom you have from God, and you are not your own? For you are bought at a price. Therefore glorify God in your body and in your spirit, which are God's. 2 Corinthians 7, 1 Therefore, having these promises, beloved, let us cleanse ourselves from all filthiness of the flesh and spirit, perfecting holiness and the fear of God. Number five, it hurts the influence of the Christian. A, many non-Christians are turned off by a Christian who smokes. B, most Christians understand this. Many who smoke will attempt to hide that they do, so when in the presence of other Christians. C, 
Those who use tobacco certainly do not help the influence of the church and often hurt it. D. What the Bible says about influence, Matthew 5, 16, 1 Peter 5, 3, 1 Timothy 4, 12. 3. Some arguments advanced in defense of smoking and some final thoughts. A. Some arguments that Christians sometimes advance. Number 1. The Bible doesn't say not to smoke, chew, etc. This is a useless argument. While it is true the Bible doesn't specifically say something about tobacco, there are principles that would guide us into determining whether it is right to use it. Such could just as easily be said about heroin consumption, eating rat poison, euthanasia, etc. Number two, the Bible says it is not what goes into a man that defiles him, but what comes out. That is a gross misinterpretation of Matthew 15, 18. Jesus is speaking of the outward washing of hands. His disciples had been accused of not being righteous because they did not carry on the pharisaical custom of washing hands before eating. He demonstrates that eating foods prior to washing doesn't make one holy or unholy. It is what is inside of you. Would some drunkenness, cocaine use, or sexual immorality be okay since it was not on the inside? And I have a comment to make about that for people who use that about what, you know, it's not what goes in, but what comes out. Well, when you smoke, what do you blow out? You blow out a bunch of filthy um, cigarette smoke, which pollutes the air around you and is also very dangerous to other people who breathe in that secondhand smoke. So just a thought. Argument number three, I knew blank. He or she lived into their 80s and used tobacco every day of their lives. Tobacco didn't kill them. This doesn't prove anything either. The fact is every study, even though sponsored by the tobacco industry, has found that those who use tobacco significantly reduce their life expectancy. Someone may happen to beat the odds and live to an old age. Do you want to gamble with sickness, radiation, and chemotherapy and an agonizing death? Number four, I like it and it doesn't seem to be hurting me. Personal likes and dislikes do not change whether something is wrong, but most tobacco users who have been using it any length of time admit that they would like to quit. If it is so great, why do they want to quit? Number five, overeating is bad for you too. There is little doubt that many in the church do overeat and have a weight problem. This can happen for various reasons, but just because many preachers, elders, deacons, and other members of the church have a weight problem doesn't change the truth about tobacco. Number six, it's none of your business. This is the final resort of a person who cannot argue his case successfully. Brethren, the fact is that the Bible does tell us that we should be concerned about others. See Galatians 6, 1 and James 5, 19 through 20. And the author of this article adds some final thoughts. This writer does not know how hard it is to quit tobacco. However, many Christians have told me that it is about the hardest thing in the world to do. If it is like taming hunger for food, it is surely difficult. We should have compassion on those who smoke, chew, etc. We should offer any help we can in helping them quit. We should never be haughty and rude toward those who are weaker. If you smoke, chew, etc., seek the Lord's help in prayer. Seek help from other Christians and do whatever it takes to quit. Conclusion William Talman was the actor who played District Attorney Berger on the famous Perry Mason television series. He made a commercial for the American Cancer Society shortly before his death. On it, he told how he smoked and how he was in a battle I can't afford to lose. At the end, he said, If you don't smoke, don't start. If you do smoke, stop. Don't be a loser as the screen faded. The message was flashed on the screen that Mr. Tallman died of lung cancer shortly after the making of this commercial. Our question to you is this. You take a huge chance of getting cancer smoking marijuana or cigarettes. This is usually a slow, painful death with hundreds of thousands of dollars spent in hospital bills. If you are a Christian, how do you tell someone about the gospel and what Christ did for you as you are succumbed with cancer and have given yourself a death sentence? What about your loved ones? Whose life did you influence while smoking? And whose life will meet your same fate? And should scripture be correctly interpreted? What if smoking even as a Christian could bring you in front of a risen Savior who says to you, as he does to so many others on that day, depart from me, I never knew you. So a highly debated question we may never know the answer to until it's too late. Why take that chance? And I can tell you from experience and struggling with cigarette smoking myself 
in times past. It is a very, very hard addiction to beat. And I remember quitting for a whole year and then struggling, going back to it off and on. The best way for me was just to go cold turkey. It was very, very hard at first. But um, I know I would tell myself I was going to quit, and the next morning it would come. It was time to drink my coffee, and I wanted a cigarette, and I would just make excuses that um, you know I needed to just go ahead and have that cigarette. You have to really determine within your heart that you're going to quit. If you don't, you'll find every reason to go buy a pack of cigarettes or smoke the next day. And the hardest thing when you want that cigarette is to call upon the Lord for help because at that moment, you are being heavily tempted and you don't want His help because you want to smoke. So I know from experience how hard it is. So let's pray this prayer right now. In Jesus' name, Lord, I just thank you and praise you for another day that you've given us as you've filled our lungs with air once again, and you have caused our hearts to continue beating. Lord, thank you for our lungs and our heart and our bodies and our health, Father. And I just thank you and praise you that you help those people out there who struggle with any addiction, um, including cigarettes and any tobacco use, marijuana, etc., Lord. And just give these people strength to be able to call upon you and to quit and to see that it is very sinful. You know, this was something that the pagans themselves did and a great corruption by Satan himself, and you do not want your people smoking. So, Father, I just thank you and praise you as you reach out with your Holy Spirit to those out there who are struggling with this addiction, that you just give them the strength to overcome it as they call upon you for their help. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Thank you so much for listening. And again, if you know someone who is struggling with any tobacco use or any addiction, please share this video with them so that they can know the truth. God bless you.